has rejected an offer from Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto to settle in Mexico. The thousands of illegal aliens within the group have instead decided to continue their trips towards the United States, which is very interesting since the Mexican president's offer would actually put the migrants into two Mexican states where they would be offered temporary work permits, medical care, shelter, and even schooling, but not welfare. And ladies and gentlemen, this is according to the Associated Press. Mexican President Nieto has announced he will call on You Are at Home plan offering shelter, medical attention, schooling, and jobs in Central America's Chiapas and Oaxaca states if migrants apply, calling it a first step towards permanent refugee status. Authorities said more than 1,700 have already applied for this status. Oh, sorry about that. That was the wrong tape. That was not a slum outside Tegucigalpa. That video was shot right here in Orange County, California, not far from Disneyland. The desperate and impoverished people on the screen you saw were American citizens. Hundreds of thousands of them sleep on the ground every night in this country. They don't make it on CNN very often. They're just Americans. Their tragedy is not interesting. If they did laundry at five bucks an hour for rich people, though, our moral superiors might notice and care. But as of now, no, the cable news geniuses could not be less concerned about what is happening to American citizens. Which, if you think about it, kind of explains the Trump phenomenon. One of the great mysteries here in Washington is how a president with no prior political experience, who's emotionally volatile and not very articulate, remains nevertheless so very popular outside of Washington. It doesn't make any sense, but of course it makes sense. Trump's secret? He says things like this. They have a word. It sort of became old-fashioned. It's called a nationalist. And I say, really, we're not supposed to use that word. You know what I am? I'm a nationalist, okay? I'm a nationalist. A nationalist. In other words, a leader who puts his own country first, who cares about his own people most. You'd think everyone in charge of a nation would be a nationalist. Putting the interests of your own citizens above those of citizens of other countries was once considered a prerequisite for running a democracy. Not anymore. Now it's considered immoral, evil, in fact. Watch this. Nationalist. Use that word. We're going to talk about that word tonight. It is a favorite of the alt-right and is loaded with nativists and racial undertones. He's weaponized race and sort of nationalism and dog whistles. You're suggesting there's some kind of dog whistle there. It is, it is. It, it applies, it, it, it does provoke uh, hate activities. What are you trying to say as President of the United States that you're a nationalist? Americans know what that means. It's not even a dog whistle anymore, it's a bullhorn. Not a whistle, it's a bullhorn. Hitler was a nationalist. Of course, so were Mahatma Gandhi and Abraham Lincoln and every other leader of every other nation state throughout history until about 20 minutes ago. But whatever. Nationalism provokes, quote, hate activity, says a sitting U.S. senator. All the cable news geniuses say amen. There was a time that in my lifetime, I'm not that old, when, <laughs> when a picture like that would have just elicited nothing but sympathy yeah. and empathy among right. the American people. You see that and you think, oh, my God, right. what must be happening where those people are coming from? How can we open our arms to people like that? These people are coming and asking for asylum. Guess what, Ben? It's in our laws that people are allowed to come to our borders and ask for asylum. This is a moral outrage that harkens to the worst excesses in the history of the country, to the separation of families at the slave auction blocks, yes. to the separation of Native American families. Hope you're following that at home. Immigration, it turns out, is not a civic question that American voters might be allowed to have opinions about. It's bigger than that. It's a moral outrage. It's a humanitarian crisis. The law is irrelevant here. So are any of your stupid, selfish concerns about the effect of impoverished foreigners moving into your neighborhood or your school district. The rule here is simple. Listen carefully. If people from a place poorer than America want to move to America, they get to do that, period. If you disagree or complain or do anything other than recite the poem at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty, you are, 
Well, you already know what you are because you've heard it a thousand times, but we're going to tell you again anyway. Maybe this time it will penetrate. You are a racist. They see those pictures and are being told, fear those brown people. The Democrats are a diverse party. The Republicans appeal uh, uh, disproportionately to older whites. And the mob thing is an attempt to alarm those voters uh, about the prospect of non-whites and immigrants. The right wing coverage of this, is it is it demagoguery? How would you describe this? It is demagoguery, Brian. It is also, I believe, racism and nativism really pandering uh, to the fears of Trump supporters and Fox News viewers. Yep, you're racist, just like you were racist for opposing Obamacare or not watching Sunday night football or believing that Brett Kavanaugh did not sexually assault someone. You are a bigot until the moment you obey the Democratic Party, at which point you are a good person like Al Sharpton or Louis Farrakhan. You know the drill. Making its way slowly up from Mexico, Secretary of Defense General Jim Mattis has also ordered hundreds of U.S. troops, about 800, to the U.S.-Mexico border in anticipation of their arrival. Roberto Hernandez is an immigration advocate who lives in San Francisco. He says he's happy the migrants are coming. He joins us tonight. Roberto, thanks very much for coming on. I don't expect uh, to convince you to change your views on immigration. Uh, we've talked many times. I know what they are. But I applaud you for being more honest than most on the left in saying out loud what you really want. So I, I want to use you to inform our viewers about the aims of the left. Tell me what the justification for this group coming here is. If they wanted asylum, they could have applied in the embassy in Tegucigalpa. They're instead coming to our border. Are they claiming that they're refugees fleeing a war? If so, what war? What is the justification for this? Good evening. First of all, let's go to our history. You know, here in uh, the Americas, no, let's we've not. Let's just go to the question. Around. The world. Okay. Look at all the Europeans that came here. This was Native American land, and Europeans right. came here. Okay. This You've demonstrated an ignorance of history sufficient that I don't want you trying to educate people. us. And then I just want you to answer my question about right now, if that's okay. If we just stick to the question, what is the justification, the legal justification, for these people coming to our border and not the U.S. Embassy in Tegucigalpa? Well, if you look at the role of the United States in Central America, in Nicaragua, in Honduras, in Guatemala, in other countries in Latin America, the United States has promoted wars uh, to protect corporate interests in a lot of these countries. And so okay. you have a lot of people who have been affected by these wars, and it's caused poverty in a lot of these countries. And currently there are, is a political climate in a lot of these countries, and people are coming here looking for okay. refugee. And so let, let, let's let's wait, hold on. No, okay. I'm I'm going to try and take you seriously. The United Nations is what, okay. what is right. supporting. Okay. Did you know that? But the United Nations well, it doesn't, is out not, there right nothing now. Nothing the United Nations does matters to me or surprises me. But let me hold on. Let me just ask you. Through the okay. caravan. I'm trying to take you seriously. You said most of them in this. The first caravan are coming from Honduras. What war specifically are you talking about that the United States promoted? Whose interests were benefiting? from that war, and when did that war end? What are you talking about specifically? Specifically, look at the, it, the role of the U.S. government in Honduras. I mean, we can go here right. all day, all what night. What war are you talking about? Time. So I want to well, make just sure give me the war. Tell me when it ended. You understand that, the, that the, okay, let me ask you this. Have you, do you know of any involvement of the U.S. in Honduras? So you, you, what you're saying you is you don't really know what you're. Hold on. What, what, what you're saying is you don't really know Nicaragua. what you're talking about, but you're throwing out a talking well, then you point. Need to do, then designed, we need to have a show okay. just to talk so, about the U.S. Okay, Roberto, government's I'm trying, involvement I'm trying. in Central I'm asking America you, hold on, and the rest stop. of Latin America. I'm asking you specifically, what war in Honduras are you talking about that the United States inspired that justifies this migrant caravan? What war? When did that war end? What year? What are you talking about, okay. or do you not know? What? I do. Okay, let's look at the role of the military of the U.S. currently in Honduras. No, but you said there was a war. So you're totally ignorant of the history of Honduras, but you are lecturing us about our responsibility to let these people in because of a war that we started, but you can't tell us what war or what year it ended. I think that's what you're saying. And, the, and not only that, but it's the involvement of the U.S. 
in okay. Honduras and Central America. Okay. We've talked about okay. this. So before. obviously history is not your subject. Let's, let's go to something. And that's oh, fine okay. with me. I'm not sure we're but, disagreeing. You know, the fact I, is I, that the I United Nations really currently about. is right. okay. supporting United this Nations. caravan. Why yeah, would okay. the United sure Nations be supporting and helping these I'm people? And not then account, Trump goes I can't imagine why the UN does a lot of things. That the US uh, uh, right. should Got it. stop let me Mexico ask you, from letting these people come right. here. Let me, uh, we're we're, we're going to change Mexico the category to the, to the 200 through. category. Let's see if you can answer this, okay? San Francisco has now announced that illegal aliens, people who have no right to be here, will be allowed to vote in local school board elections. You live in the city. You think this is a great idea. Do you think Americans who sneak into other people's countries ought to be allowed to vote in their elections? Well, let's look at how many um, uh, 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 white people live in Mexico. The Mexican government doesn't harass them. But let's let's look. Are at they allowed to vote in elections? People did. Look how many people did not vote in this last election. Look, look at the numbers. Okay. I would okay. say as a performance so, artist, you're you're talented. But I just want to get a one straight answer. Are Americans who sneak into other people's countries without permission? allowed, do they have a right to vote in those countries' elections? Do I have a right to sneak into Mexico and announce that I get to vote there? And if you don't let me, you're a racist. Is that a human right that I possess? So let's get it clear. In San Francisco, these individuals that are being allowed to vote are only voting for the election for the members of the oh. Board of Education. Another question unanswered. And All right. these, these people right should okay. have the right to vote it. specifically right. for those who are going to okay. make policies and decisions affecting their it. children okay so i asked you a couple simple questions you, you couldn't come up with an answer text me later if those answers come to you okay roberto i appreciate it thank you very much